This is a map of North America, and if you look here, you'll see the state of Wyoming. This state happens to be home to one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes in the world, which resides inside Yellowstone National Park. Despite this, we still see thousands of tourists flock here every year to take a look at the monument. But this might change soon, and that's because scientists have got back tests that prove this volcano is even more dangerous than previously thought. In this video, we're going to take a look at scientists' terrifying discoveries at Yellowstone Volcano. The Yellowstone caldera is known as a supervolcano because of its potential to wreak worldwide havoc if a super eruption happens in the future. This is what has occurred times before, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago, prompting worries that another enormous eruption is overdue, according to the average period between prior eruptions. The United States Geological Survey maintains the accusations are worrisome, but they continue to monitor seismographs near Yellowstone National Park for unusual activity. Yellowstone, in Wyoming's western state, seems to be a latent supervolcano, which implies it might erupt again in the future. Life science previously revealed that Yellowstone's supervolcano had erupted at least 10 times in the last 16 million years. According to a 2017 research, the Yellowstone supervolcano may erupt sooner than initially assumed, although it'll most probably be a minor eruption. When supervolcanoes erupt, they leave a trail of ash that blankets the Earth and forms plumes of ash that can sometimes be thousands of meters thick. Because of the expulsion of lava, the explosion also creates a gigantic hole in the Earth known as a caldera. In a remark, co-author Dr. George Cooper of Cardiff University School of Earth and Environmental Sciences stated, super eruptions can start literally with a bang and collapse of the chamber roof or begin gradually with hesitancy before escalating into catastrophic activity. Overall, the eruption can be rapid, uninterrupted events over a few days, or episodic sequence prolonged over decades. The uncertainty associated with these events, therefore, makes it very challenging to determine when and how these volcanoes may potentially erupt in the future. Shenhua Huang, a study author and seismologist at the University of Utah, said, for the first time, we have imaged the continuous volcanic plumbing system under Yellowstone. That includes the upper crustal magma chamber we have seen previously, plus a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imaged before, and that connects the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below. According to ScienceMag.com, the finding represents the missing link between both the plume and the magma chamber, as described by the geophysicist Peter Savelli. A supervolcano has produced a pyroclastic volume of over 1,000 cubic kilometers as assessed by the US Geological Survey and has had an eruption of at least eight on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. Supervolcanic eruptions are exceedingly uncommon, happening just once per 100,000 years. The researchers want to utilize more advanced technologies, such as machine learning techniques, to better decipher signs of buried magma, as well as its motion in the days and hours leading up to an eruption. They also stated that additional education regarding the frequency with which supervolcanoes erupt is required. Yellowstone is an example where misinformation has led to the public perception that a catastrophic eruption may be imminent, whereas in reality it is extremely unlikely," continued Dr. Cooper. Therefore, we need to improve our understanding and communication as to the difference between normal non-eruptive unrest versus indicators that an eruption may be about to happen. The research was published in the journal Nature Reviews Earth and Environment on Tuesday. Most of what's now known as Idaho was engulfed by plumes of hot volcanic ash 8.7 million years ago, 
killing everything plant and animals in sight. Yellowstone, a supervolcano, was exploding. This was the most powerful eruption in Yellowstone's history. Super eruptions may wipe out entire regions, and the ash and gases they spew can change the climate. Although they release massive volumes of debris, super eruptions are rare in the geological record. As a result, we don't completely comprehend why they are so large or how frequently they occur. New research published in the journal Geology documents the intricacies of the Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption. Past Yellowstone outbursts strewed volcanic ash throughout the western United States. It might be hard to distinguish between eruptions due to the large number of dumps, tens of thousands of square kilometers. To get around this, volcanologists gathered precise identifiable details on every geological deposit comprising molecular and temporal data. They discovered that most of the volcanic material, which has been previously considered to have come from several minor eruptions, had almost the same chemical components and age after they examined the data. In reality, two heretofore unrecognized super eruptions were responsible for the formation of these deposits. These eruptions were extremely hot, resulting in a thick layer of molten volcanic glass covering the terrain. The Grays Landing super eruption, the younger of the two, is estimated to have occurred 8.7 million years ago and is 30% greater than all preceding Yellowstone eruptions depending on the volume of material ejected. With the addition of these eruptions, Yellowstone now has a total of six late Miocene eruptions. This equates to one eruption every 520,000 years. The rate of eruptions has dropped since then. It began to happen once every 1.5 million years. Yellowstone happens to be decelerating according to the data. And if current trends continue, the next super eruption will be 900,000 years away. Forecasting eruptions are, however, a dangerous business. So the US Geological Survey has a continuous monitoring program on Yellowstone just in case. Researchers at Cardiff University examined geochemical and petrographic data from 13 super eruptions that occurred during the previous 2 million years, along with the latest one, Tauk Volcano in New Zealand, which occurred over 24,000 years ago. There seemed to be no single unified mode that demonstrated what each of the 13 events unfolded, including some beginning slowly throughout weeks or even months, and the others exploding quickly and brutally. The eruptions persisted for varying lengths of time, with some lasting only a few days or weeks, and others lasting decades, according to the researchers. The youngest, Toba Tuff, which erupted 74,000 years ago, erupted practically quickly, according to the experts. On the other hand, the Oru Anui eruption, which occurred around 25,000 years ago, slowly began before undergoing a caldera collapse and then advancing over many months. A super eruption would be a once-in-a-lifetime catastrophe that would alter the Earth and our culture forever. It's difficult to foresee the entire extent of the destruction, but there are some effects that are expected, such as a rapid drop in temperature. Colder temperatures might be the most far-reaching impact of a Yellowstone eruption. Sulfur gas may be injected into the high atmosphere by volcanoes, generating sulfuric acid aerosols that quickly spread over the world. Sulfuric aerosols, according to scientists, are the primary source of climatic cooling following an eruption. Aerosols in the Earth's atmosphere would disperse sunlight throughout the day, giving the sky the appearance of an overcast winter morning. Throughout the days following the eruption, the sky in Europe would become crimson. The BBC used historical data from the Toba supervolcano in Indonesia, which erupted 74,000 years ago, 
as well as a computer simulation projection from the UK Met Office and the Max Planck Institute in Hamburg to estimate how the climate would be affected. A Yellowstone eruption, according to the experts, would release 2,000 million tons of sulfur 40 to 50 kilometers over the Earth's surface. It really would require two to three weeks for the ensuing sulfuric acid aerosols to blanket the world, causing catastrophic consequences. According to computer models, global yearly average temperatures might decrease by much to 10 degrees. In addition, the Northern Hemisphere might see a 12 degree drop in temperature. Colder temperatures, according to the experts, might endure 6 to 10 years before reverting to normal. According to the scientists, the monsoon will collapse as a result of even greater temperature shifts in the Southern Hemisphere, bringing catastrophic hunger in Asian countries that rely on such existing rains. The summer after the eruption might be at least 5 degrees colder across Europe. Given the scale of the eruption, the period of the year and a variety of other conditions, the repercussions of a Yellowstone super eruption may vary. Based on all the new research, we know that Yellowstone supervolcano will erupt again. We just have to hope it's not any time in the near future. It might be surprising, but Yellowstone isn't even the biggest volcanic threat to humanity. Make sure to click the video on your screen and I'll show you the underwater volcano that has scientists scrambling for answers. I'll see you there.